Applying Formal Charge. We'll now work some examples to see how formal charge helps us come up with most likely resonance structures. We'll start with the phosphate ion up here, and we'll start by drawing the Lewis structure. Here's one possible structure for the phosphate ion PO4. We can see, hopefully, each oxygen has eight electrons. Right, the bond there counts as two, the octet rule is good, and phosphorus has eight electrons, four bonds. Next, we'll determine the formal charge for each atom. So we need to find the formal charge for phosphorus and then the formal charge for each oxygen atom. From the periodic table, we can find that phosphorus has five valence electrons and oxygen has six. So here's the five for phosphorus and the six for oxygen. Now we add together the bonds and electrons on each atom. So phosphorus here has four bonds. So we subtract that from four and we get plus one for a formal charge. Now each oxygen, its valence is six, and each oxygen has two, four, six, seven electrons. So the formal charge for each oxygen is minus one. So let's check it. The formal charges of the atoms must add up to the charges of the molecule. So for the phosphate ion, the charges must add up to negative three. So let's do the check. Phosphorus is plus one, and each oxygen is minus one. So we add them all together. Phosphorus contributes plus one. We have four oxygens. Each one contributes minus one. So we have plus one minus four. We get negative three. So that checks. That checks with the charge on the phosphate ion. But none of the atoms has a formal charge of zero. Perhaps this is not the most stable structure, the phosphate ion. We must look at other possible structures. So we can come up with three possible structures. This first one here, we have, what do we have? Two double bonds. Then let's look at the next one. We have tr three double bonds, one, two, three. And then finally here, we have one double bond. So we need to find the formal charge of phosphorus and the double bonded oxygen and the single bonded oxygen. And the top one has two doubles, two singles. This one here has three doubles and one single, and this has three singles and one double bond. So let's go through this. We have the valence of phosphorus is five and oxygen is six. So that will be the same for each one of our examples. So let's count phosphorus in the beginning here. How many electrons is phosphorus accountable for in the Lewis structure? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has a formal charge of negative one. The double, the double bonded oxygens, let's see, two, four, five, six. So six minus six is zero. And then the single bonded oxygen, let's see, two, four, six, seven electrons. So six minus seven is minus one. So do we have to repeat some of this? Well, yeah, let's look at each one because we have different bonds. Just trying to take a shortcut. The uh, formal charge of the phosphorus over here, right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons that it's accountable for. The valence of a neutral phosphorus is still five. So we now have five minus seven minus two. The double, the double bonded oxygen, okay, that's still the same as this up here. So that'll be zero. And a single bonded oxygen is still going to be negative one. So we actually don't have to repeat all the calculations. Now let's go to the last one. We have phosphorus, and let's see how many electrons it has in the Lewis structure. One, two, three, four, five. So this time we get a formal charge of five minus five or zero. The single bonded oxygens, the same as negative one, and the one double bonded oxygen is zero. None of these show all their atoms with a formal charge of zero. How will we determine the best structure? The next slide will provide guidelines for selecting the most stable. We've now looked at four possible Lewis structures for the same polyatomic ion. How do we decide which one is best? Well, we have a little process here to find the best resonance structure using formal charge. Number one, the lowest magnitudes of formal charges. Atoms in a molecule will tend to have formal charges close to zero. 
Structures with larger charges, such as plus 2 or minus 2, are not favorable. Number 2, the most atoms with zero formal charge. But if more than one structure has the same number of atoms with a formal charge of zero, go on to step 3. Now, the negative formal charge is assigned to the most electronegative atom because the atoms will be more dense there. So which structure is best? We'll analyze the four possible phosphate ions. The first one, none of the atoms have a formal charge equal to zero, not favorable. The remaining structures all have three atoms with a formal charge of zero. We'll use the additional guidelines to choose the best structure. Let's see. This one here, a formal charge of negative 2 is not favorable. This one here, we have three atoms with a formal charge of 0. But what do we have? We have only two oxygen atoms carrying a negative charge and one phosphorus atom carrying a negative charge. So let's look at the last one, see if we can break the tie. Once again, three atoms have a formal charge of 0. But in this case, all the oxygen at, three of the oxygen atoms carry the negative charges and phosphorus doesn't have any. So, because oxygen is more electronegativity than phosphorus, the final structure is the most favorable. It assigns more electrons to the oxygen atoms than it does to phosphorus. Example two, the acetyl ion has a formula of H3CCO minus. Draw two possible Lewis structures and, using formal charge, determine which structure is most likely correct. Here are two possible Lewis electron dot diagrams. We've got the two carbons here in a line. And then, let's count up our valence electrons. Hydrogen has two. This hydrogen has two. So does this one. This carbon has two, four, six, eight. This other carbon has two, four, six, eight. We're good there. And then oxygen has eight. And then what did we do in the second case? Well, first let's get rid of some of these marks so we can make a clearer comparison. And this time we have three hydrogens bonded to this carbon over here. And we have a double bond between carbon and oxygen. So let's calculate the formal charges of the carbon atoms and the oxygen atom. So here we go. The valence for carbon, carbon has four valence electrons, and oxygen has six. So let's look at this carbon first. It has, in the Lewis structure, it has one, two, three, four electrons. So its formal charge is zero. And the other carbon, same thing, formal charge zero. Now let's look at the oxygen. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. So its formal charge is six minus seven, or negative one. And the total charge, when you add all the formal charges up, you get a negative one, which matches. Let's look at the second one. First carbon, it has one, two, three, four electrons in the Lewis structure. So we have its valence, which is four, valence electrons, four minus four, we get zero. The second carbon, and again, let me just clean this up. Second carbon, the valence electrons are four from the periodic table. And let's count the electrons in the Lewis structure. One, two, three, four, five. Four minus five is negative one. And oxygen now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six minus six is zero. Total charge negative one, that's excellent. But we have, each molecule has two atoms that have a formal charge equal to zero. Which is the better diagram? We have to use the electronegativity principle, the third step. In a table of electronegativities, hopefully we find that oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So, the structure on the left is the best representation. Why? Because the extra negative charge will go to the more electronegative atom. So, here's carbon. There it gets the negative one. Nope, that's no good. Oxygen should have the negative one because that will attract that extra electron more strongly. Let's return to our resonance structures for sulfur trioxide and use formal charge to determine the most stable structure of this molecule. It's important to remember that sulfur does not always follow the octet rule. So we're going to start by drawing the Lewis structures with one, two, or three double bonds around the sulfur atom. 
Sulfur may participate in one, two, or three double bonds. So the first one we have one double bond, and that's two, four, six, eight electrons. Cool, that's the octet rule. And then we just fill in oxygen to make sure each oxygen has eight electrons. We go to the next one. Two, four, six, eight, ten electrons for sulfur. That's because it's kind of not following the octet rule. And once again, we ensure that all the oxygens have eight electrons because they follow the octet rule. And finally, we have the triple bonds here, where sulfur has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Again, not following the octet rule. Next, use the formula for formal charge to find the formal charges for each atom. And remember, formal charge is valence electrons minus number of electrons possessed in the Lewis structure. Then use the principles of formal charge to choose the best structure. Determine the formal charges for each atom. Both sulfur and oxygen have a valence of six, so that will be the first number in everything we work with here. Now let's count the electrons in the Lewis structure for each one. Well, sulfur here, it has one, two, three, four. So six minus four has a formal charge of two. The one oxygen, and let me just erase these marks up there. The one oxygen with the double bond here has two, four, six. Electrons in the Lewis structure, 6 minus 6 is 0. Then the two oxygens with the single bond have 7 electrons each, so 6 minus 7, negative 1 formal charge. Let's go to the next one, over here. Sulfur this time has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 electrons in the Lewis structure, so 6 minus 5 is plus 1. We have two oxygens with double bonds, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six again electrons in the structure, so that has a formal charge of zero. Then we have the one oxygen with the single bond. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in the Lewis structure, six minus seven is negative one. Now we go to the last one, which we have boxed up, so you can kind of guess that's the right answer. Sulfur, let's look at sulfur first. It has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the Lewis structure, so it has a formal charge of zero. And each oxygen has the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons. So six minus six is zero. So every atom has a formal charge in this structure equal to zero. So that is the best Lewis structure for sulfur trioxide.